Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks the Great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to become a better boxer in UFC 4. Now, I kind of touched on these, these things that I've talked about and that I'm gonna talk about in this video in a previous video, but I just kind of wanted to go over it again as I do have some new subs to the channel. So you guys can see we're using a calf Lomachenko here up against Bruce Lee. Now, first things first. If you want to be a boxer in UFC 4, you have to be comfortable with being in the pocket against your opponent because you're not going to be using the kicks. Kicks are very are really utilized when you're outside of the pocket. They can keep your opponent at range, get them to lower their guard with leg kicks or even front kicks to the head. Kind of makes your opponent real weary about coming in to the pocket. But when you're boxing, that's not necessarily the case. So you got to be comfortable with being inside the pocket like you see here. I'm trying to nullify Bruce Lee's kicks by just putting the pressure on him and being inside that pocket where I can land my damaging combinations. So as you can see, I'm pressing forward here, utilizing the nice jab, going down to the body. And that's something that <clears throat> I, I just want to touch on right away too. You also have to be able to utilize the jab. If you don't know how to utilize and have a good jab, then you're probably not going to be very good at boxing in UFC 4, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just being honest with you. If you don't know how to pop out your jab to use it at distance and to move in and out with your strikes, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to be a good boxer uh, in any game, let alone UFC 4. So the next thing that I wanted to go over with you guys, as you guys can see here, is I'm mixing it up high-low. You must, absolutely must mix up high-low combinations if you're going to be just boxing in UFC 4. That's going to get your opponent to lower their guards and set up the combinations to the head. Uh, it's a very, very basic blocking system that we do have in UFC 4. So there's not real uh, a lot of ways to really manipulate the guard as boxers do in real life. So in order to kind of counteract head striking, you have to go down to the body. So you see here, I'm moving in and out. I'm cracking to the head, but I'm also occasionally throwing that jab to the body just to threaten that mix-up like I did right there. I'm moving off my head. And I'm staying in that pocket when I can. I'm only stepping back when I absolutely need to. I'm only I'm, I'm kind of staying at range too in this fight just to try to bait out those kicks so that way I can counter it with an overhand. It's a very, very useful tip for a, a lot of you newer guys that are just starting out trying to become better players at UFC 4. Baiting out kicks... And countering them with an overhand can really, really, really take your game to the next level. Because it'll really make people start to think about when they're kicking you. Or just taking kicks out in general. I accidentally shot a takedown right there, which is not what we want to do. So we get back up to the feet. But one way to nullify kicks is to bait them out, hit them with an overhand. So see, we're applying the pressure here. And this guy's actually did a pretty good job in this first round. Of not letting us swarm him <clears throat> as the first round ends. So you're going to need to take your time. If you're just going to be boxing in UFC 4, you need to take your time. You need to be patient and look for the openings and set up your strikes to the head to get KO, uh, to get KO opportunities. Because if you're just boxing, let me tell you, UFC 4 is not going to help you out a ton. Uh, especially if somebody is trying to run. Running is a very, very uh, big thing in the game right now because it's it's very, very hard to cage cut no matter how good a footwork you have. UFC 4 kind of allows you to take angles as a retreating fighter that the, the aggressive fighter can't cut off. So just be aware of that as well. So you see here, the guy hit me with a good slip counter uppercut right there, but we are able to knock him down, counter again. Now we're kind of getting a feel for what he wants to do in his rhythm. He's kind of speeding it up just a little bit to try to keep him off of us. But we did get the knockdown, so we're ahead in this round. So that's that kind of touches, kind of leads into the third thing that I wanted to tell you guys. And that's you have to establish a rhythm. You have to be able to not only establish a rhythm with yourself, but be able to read your opponent's rhythm. It's super important to being a good boxer in UFC 4. Uh, is it being able to read a your opponent's rhythm and what pace they want to fight at. So that way you can adjust your pace to make them feel a little more uncomfortable. So like right there, he knew we were going down to the body. He switched it up through an uppercut. Got a nice little rock off right there. Now we need to counter back, switch it up. 
We're fighting a little more off the back foot just to try to change it up. So now we've both gotten rocks in this round. We both have made really good reads. And that's exactly what makes for a really good fight. When you guys are watching these ESFL fights, these guys are very, very good at changing pace. Guys like Prioxis, guys like Romero, guys like Goat, uh, Suave Jamie, Ed Parker. All of these guys are elite level strikers that really know how to change the pace at the drop of a dime. So you really need to get comfortable with doing that if you're going to be an elite level boxer slash striker in UFC 4. So here we're trying to get back into the pocket, which is where we want to be at because we're only boxing. And this guy's trying to establish a rhythm. So you see what I did right there is I fainted off that 1-2 just to try to throw off his timing. But it doesn't look like he's playing very reactionary. He's just kind of, kind of just fighting at his own pace, which is good, which lets me know that even though this guy might, I can't remember what division he's in. He's a very, very good player, and he knows what he's doing. Caught me with a good kick, rocked me again. There's a good hook right there. And notice he's fighting in southpaw as well, just to give us a different look, which is very, very nice stuff. So now we're, we're in southpaw as well. Trying to just land some good combinations just to get a little bit of momentum back. But with 10 seconds left, we're not going to be able to get uh, all of that damage back that we took. But we're just trying to establish some momentum as the second round ends right there. We had a very, very solid beginning of the second round. We were able to establish that pace I was telling you guys about. But he, my opponent, did a very, very good job of switching up his timing. And he was able to throw a couple of strikes that I really didn't see coming. That jumping switch kick and get a lot of damage. So we did lose that round. So we're going to try to make it up here in the third round and be and get more damaging strikes off and change the pace so right there we catch him immediately off of strikes that he didn't expect coming but he launches that uppercut which lets me know that he's anticipating our, us going to the body very well so we need to try to change it up and maybe mix up when we're going to the body in a combination as well so here we're taking our time Feigning off strikes just to try to change up that timing, like I said. And I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be in the comment section asking about what combinations to throw. And like I say on my streams, throw whatever combination you feel is going to land and whatever one is working, you stick with. So if that means this certain combination is landing to the body, continue to go to the body until your opponent makes you change. Then you switch it up. I'd highly recommend you guys work on combinations not only to the head, but to the body as well. So that way you have combinations for any circumstance in the fight. That's what I really pride myself on. Um, I pride myself on if my opponent lets me go down to the body as he misses a kick right there, then we have combinations to the body. But we also have good combinations to the head as well. So I'm prepared to go any place really the fight allows me to go. So here we got that rock off. We're not trying to take as much damage, but like I said, you are going to take damage when you're just trying to pocket fight, which we are doing right here. You're going to take a lot of damage, so don't get too discouraged uh, with the damage. Like you see, my head health is a little low. My body health is a little low. That's really to be expected uh, with just trying to box in UFC 4. I'm going to take a lot of damage as he rocks us right there off good timing. He changed up his pace. We changed up our pace. We almost got a rock off. Double jabbing into that block. Like I said earlier, you need to know how to use the jab. Closing the distance. He's using the double jab too, trying to fire off a four-piece, but we were able to block it. He misses on the three-piece. Just applying that pressure. If he makes one mistake, we're going to be able to, to get that rock that we need and potentially get him out of here. And there is the mistake. Crack him with a good uppercut as he tried to go down to the body. Block break him right there. We're not jumping on him because we're trying to get that clean KO. Nice major lunge off. Ooh, he hits me with a good kick. Block is low, but not broken enough to get knocked out by that kick, though. But you see, we're going back and forth because we're both changing the pace and really just changing up the tempo of our combinations. Just taking our time. Crack him with a good straight off of that kick that he threw inside the pocket. Double jabbing, breaking that block down. Nice two-piece, keeps that block low. 
Excuse me. Now we're just trying to take our time as the third round ends right there. We were able to get a good knockdown in that round. We caught him with a good uppercut as well as a good lead hook right there. That got us that perfectly timed knockdown that we needed just to win that round. So here in the fourth round, we're going to try to continue that same trend here. Feigning off a strike. Nice turning kick, side kick to the body by him. Just applying that pressure. Popping out that jab. Catching with a good hook as he tried to slip. Knocking down. Now we, I know that head is all kinds of hurt because I've done a lot of damage to it. Just trying to take our time. Catching with a nicely timed straight. Off that little minor slip. Got the dub. Off of all that damage that we were able to accumulate in that last round. But that's how you want to do it. You have to make those adjustments if you're wanting to box in UFC 4. But that's it for the video, guys. Hopefully these tips in this video help you guys to take your game to the next level. If boxing and being an elite level striker is really what you want to be. If you guys did enjoy this video and you guys are new to the channel, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. It'd be much appreciated. But until the next video, guys, thank you guys for stopping by. And I will see you guys in the next one.